my sense, I'm not a great expert on this, but uh, from what uh, I think and what our, our panelists during our conference thought is, it makes it much, much more difficult uh, unless you can at least get something going again in terms of a credible move toward particularly Israeli-Palestinian peace. Now, I think the Syrian issue is off the table for the indefinite future, but the Palestinian issue is not necessarily. Um, but if you can't get something going serious there, it just makes it all much, much more difficult. And it makes American policy more difficult. It makes our credibility in the region more difficult, especially with more populist governments probably coming along in uh, Egypt and elsewhere, perhaps, in, in the Arab world as time goes on. And historically, I mean, Turkish society has always been very sensitive to the Palestinian cause, and they were sensitive in the 1990s, but nobody, nobody cared because military was the dominant actor. But now that we have a government who got, which got 50% of the popular vote, what people say is important. And I'm not quite sure whether this is a good thing for foreign policy. Uh, but it, it, is, it has become more democratic. Foreign policy making has, been, has become more democratic, which makes things very complicated, especially if you live in a region like the Middle East. Uh, it's, it's very complicated. So I'm, I'm not quite sure. Um, and again, when I mentioned uh, the issue with Cyprus, uh, I think Israel has pushed too many bu buttons that now the AKP cannot do anything. Uh, to mend the relationship. David? Front row again. Hi, uh, David Mack from the Middle East Institute. I wonder if one of the things we're seeing is another sign of the declining influence and role of the United States, and for that matter, other external players in the Middle East. We have Increasingly assertive Israel and increasingly assertive Turkey, um, and um, we've reached a point, I think, where it was a normal thing to have a close Israeli-Turkish um, relationship because both of them were very conscious of the fact that the United States wanted to see that, and they wanted to cultivate the United States, and that was a big factor both of them. And all, as far as I can tell, all the efforts that the Obama government made uh, try to prevent this um, estrangement of its two allies, two key allies, were just ineffective. Yeah, I, I tried to allude to that in my opening remarks, that one of the things that has probably contributed to this is the uh, decline of American influence in the region as we react to our perhaps overextended position, withdrawing from Iraq. And you just look at across the region at the things we have tried to do, and, and we, you know, we tried to keep Mubarak or Omar Soleiman in power. That didn't work too well. Uh, we've tried to you know, keep the Iranians from going down the, the road of nuclear enrichment. That hasn't worked too well. We've tried to persuade the uh, Iraqis to uh, allow American troops to stay under our rules, that doesn't seem to be working too well. It is pretty clear that we aren't getting our way very frequently, and we're not getting it when we go to the Israelis and the Turks and say, don't you think you guys could find a way of patching things up? So yes, I think we're going to see a Middle East in which we are still a, a factor in people's considerations, but we're no longer the dominant consideration for anybody. Um, and I'm not sure that's a bad thing. I think we were excessively engaged uh, at, uh, many times in the past decade or so, but it's going to take some getting used to that we are no longer able to call the shots, even with countries that we've had quite close relationship with. You know, we, you, know, you say, why can't you get the Saudis to do something? You saved their neck in 1990. Why can't you get the Iraqis to do something? You put them in power. Well, get used to it. You know, that's, that's the new Middle East for us. Uh, we're going to have a hard time persuading uh, countries to do what we want simply because we want it. And that will include things like patching up this kind of relationship. Now, I, I think that you know what it could mean is a return of the Middle East to a different kind of power balance in which Egypt will also return to a more kind of natural role as one of the players in the region. And it may actually turn out to be um, 
a Middle East that, that has a certain equilibrium of its own, but one in which we no longer uh, are shaping it as, as much as we tried to. And I think that's why I think the Arab Spring has strengthened Turkish-U.S. Uh, alliance in the region because to the United States knows that it will be a weaker actor in the region. And a country like Turkey that's been uh, very effective uh, in terms of its foreign policy uh, has become a, a more important ally, an Amer American ally in, in the region. I just add, though, I mean, I, I completely agree, but unfortunately that is going to rub up against the Israel-Turkey problem. Um, we have a Congress, which is now, I mean, I was looking at statements on the record for the past couple of weeks, openly, you know, calling Turkey essentially an enemy of Israel, which by extension in congressional language is an enemy of the U.S. So we're entering this very strange period where we have, if the U.S.-Turkish relationship, that bilateral relationship, has really been sort of a strategic relationship that made sense where Israel Turkey had their own sort of bilateral bargain for a while, um, it seems like the Israel-Turkey bilateral bargain is now going to be influencing um, what was a different kind of U.S.-Turkey relationship in the past. And I mean, going back to sort of what this looks like headed, you know, going forward, um, I'm not sure necessarily that Israel relations with Turkey won't get better than they are now. And I'm not sure that when they do change, and I think they will, I think we are going through ebbs and flows here, um, that it won't be in some ways a, a different kind of healthier relationship based not on the, we are the two sort of outliers, um, a Jewish state in the Middle East and a Turkish speaking Muslim state on the fringes of the Middle East, um, but actually two states that have independence of their foreign policy and self-confidence um, and hopefully are making some strategic, and this is um, an important idea because that also brings back the Middle East peace process, some strategic decisions that they have common interests and they're going to pursue policies that support them. Um, I actually think that a slightly cooler piece where you don't have Hebrew signs all over Istanbul, but you actually have a healthier, more honest relationship might be better for both sides. On the point of uh, where the constituencies are for Turkey and Israel in the United States, let's recall that, you know, over the years, um, uh, it was always the executive branch that was the great defender of Turkey, and whether it was the Greek-Turkish relationship or the Israel-Turkish relationship, um, that Congress wouldn't necessarily see it that way. So we could, you know, the, the two branches of our government have not always been perfectly aligned on uh, whether, uh, whether Turkey is, you know, a net positive to U.S. interests or not. So we may be reverting to a pattern that we had seen in the past. Any questions or comments from this side of the room? We haven't, uh, please. Hi, with all the Well, you're not talking about a Kurdish state uh, being carved out of Turkey, I assume, but... No, no. <laughs> well, I think the Kurds are realistic enough uh, to know that a Kurdish state independent of Iraq, uh, Iran, and Syria, and Turkey is not, uh, is not very rational at the moment. Because if you have a Turkey that's not happy with a Kurdish state uh, in the north, and if you have uh, one on, uh, in, the, south, in the, the west and the east, uh, I, don't think, uh, I don't think it's a viable option. I think the Kurds know that. And I think that's one of the... There's a, there's a, a recent study conducted by Tesev uh, among Kurds in Turkey, and they asked, in the survey, uh, people were asked whether they wanted to have an independent Kurdish state, and 78% said no. And I don't think the situation is different in, uh, among Kurds in, in Iran, in, in northern Iraq, uh, or in Syria. So in that sense, I don't think there will be uh, an independent Kurdish state. 